As a former project manager in two pharmaceutical companies and now high performance coach, I know how important it is to have a well-organized day for high productivity, optimal recovery, and of course, some enjoyment. And in this context, it looks like we have some work to do. Now, to give you the statistics of the Flow Research Collective, 84% of people report that they are stressed out, but the average person actually only works 2.3 hours a day. What? Yes, unfortunately, yes. Uh, this is because the rest of the day is typically wasted with duplicate work, 36 email checks a day, constant distractions, etc. So the question, of course, is how does a good day actually look like? Now, what elements should an extremely productive day have so that you get critical things done? How can you ensure that you're well recovered, vital and stress resistant while enjoying yourself? And how do you schedule your ideal day with a written planner or an electronic calendar such as Outlook? Well, in today's video, I will answer all of these questions for you. And the answers might not be sexy, but these things, they work. And these tips will make you more productive and more successful. Now, also as a little bonus, I will also show you my personal calendar for high performance. So stay tuned guys. Now, if you're excited, please take a moment to smash those like and subscribe buttons uh, so that we can grow the channel and build an army of high performance and neuroscience enthusiasts together. I would highly appreciate it. That said, my name is Nicholas. I'm a neuroscientist, dementia researcher, as well as a high performance and flow coach. And this is how to schedule the perfect day for productivity. So as promised earlier, these are the elements of the ideal day. Now, first and foremost, what you definitely want to have is two to four deep work or flow sessions. Uh, these are ideally 90 to 120 minutes in length, because that is how long we can pay attention and how long our energy levels actually stay consistent. After that time, we usually hit an energy slump and we need at least a short break of five to 10 minutes. Uh, other than that, you want to spend a total of three to six hours in flow, in deep focus, working on your most important tasks. Other than that, another important element is, of course, active recovery. You could also uh, call it uh, positive psychology, simply because these exercises, such as meditation, for example, have general benefits for your mental and physical health. And they also have uh, benefits for your focus, for your attention, and to decrease stress levels. More about that later. Other than that, the third point would, of course, be that you want to have a workday closure ritual. You need to unplug at a certain time of the day. You have to unplug after work. Uh, also, to avoid that you carry on stress into your sleep, that it disrupts your sleep. And you need time to pre-plan the next day, of course. And finally, what you want to have is some time for yourself, a winding down ritual that is, and that is also important to avoid chronic stress. And of course, some enjoyment has to be part of the ideal day. So let's have a closer look. First and foremost, what you want to have or ideally want to have is a morning deep work or morning flow session. Now for your information, for the background, flow is this deeply absorbed state in which you're so deeply immersed into what you do that you literally forget anything else. So if we're talking about extreme focus, we basically talk about flow. Also because flow is the most productive and creative state, in fact, in existence. Now that said, I will also propose here a flow of how you should order or could order your different elements of the day. And after that, I will also show you my personal calendar, but these are drag and drop. So you can adjust them according to your uh, personal preferences and also according to your so-called chronotype. Now chronotype could be early bird, it could be third bird, or it could be night owl. And what these speak for is simply when you are the most alert. For example, owls like myself are actually the most alert at the end of the day. Whereas uh, the lark, for example, my apology is called lark. The lark would be most alert in the morning. And of course, you want to have your work blocks when you are the most alert. Other than that, it is always useful to have a deep work session early in the morning. 
uh, and to tackle the most important hard task immediately. It has several reasons, one of them being that your willpower is actually the highest in the morning. It is also because the dopamine levels, the cortisol levels, the adrenaline levels, so those energizing neurochemicals are actually at the highest in the first half of the day. So other than that, of course, you want to have your undisturbed focus, meaning no distractions, more about it in a moment. But for flow, very important is the fact that sleep, so the brainwaves that you have during sleep more precisely, which would be alpha and theta, are actually very close to flow, very close to this extremely deeply focused state. So the fact that you're still a bit sleepy in the morning is actually not a bad thing because it helps you to transition into this deep focused state. Now, here on the left hand side, that's just a brain voice for you so that you know what I'm talking about. Generally, if you're awake, if you're focused on something, you are in beta wave. So your brain basically produces beta waves, which are at the top, which are pretty fast. Then below that, the meditative state that's called it is alpha waves, which is a bit slower. So that's when you're usually daydreaming when you're still half asleep. And below that, that's when you have theta and delta. Now, delta is actually asleep. Whereas theta, that is when you are in a deeply relaxed state, for example, when you meditate. And for flow, flow seems to be more of a meditative state, interestingly enough. Uh, but also in flow, you process information automatically. So it's basically that your subconscious mind simply is running. And again, to get into this automatic processing state and this deeply focused state, it helps to get there immediately after sleep. Other than that, you have, of course, your work blocks. You work 90 to 120 or 90 to 180 minutes even a day. What you want to do is, of course, have mini breaks in between because the energy levels, they will not stay consistent. You will eventually hit, uh, you will hit the wall eventually. So ideally, you can schedule these mini breaks or do those mini breaks whenever you feel that your energy levels and focus go down. When you feel like you want to distract yourself and check your phone, for example, uh, and good breaks in this case would be things such as wall staring. Yeah, I mean it. Just staring at a freaking wall for five to ten minutes. That is literally one of the best breaks you can have. And one of the reasons why that is, is because you want to avoid to stimulate your prefrontal cortex. Now, the prefrontal cortex is a part of your brain that is responsible for logic, thinking, for planning, and for all of these things. And what happens when you work is that this part of your brain pretty much fatigues. And that means that you do not want to throw even more fatiguing stuff in your prefrontal cortex. So you don't want social media, no phone, no videos, no emails, no TV, no, not even socializing because all of these things stimulate your brain. They, load, they give you additional cognitive load. So you need to do the opposite. You need to do things that are not stimulating, that are even boring. So literally things that are boring, such as wall staring. You could have a little walk. You could do some stretching. You could close your eyes, which is incredible because it blocks off the sensory information that's coming in into your mind. One of the best ways to relax. You could take a quick nap of five to 10 minutes. I do that from time to time, in fact, or just have a quick exercise, do some squats, anything that is not cognitively stimulating, that will replenish your energy in no time and within five to 10 minutes easily. Other than that, we have hard set rules for the work and for flow sessions. And I mean it, switch off your freaking phone, switch it off. Or maybe uh, just the best thing will actually be to put it in a completely different room and not even think about your phone can also switch in flight mode, no notification, nothing, because the phone, in fact, it there's actually, there are studies out there that suggest that the phone causes ADHD because of bombarding us with different types of information. Just scroll through Facebook, you see millions uh, of notifications of posts popping up, and those pretty much drain your attention because we have something called the task switching penalty. So every time you switch tasks, uh, you lose a little bit of focus. And if you scroll for a Facebook, a Facebook post and you see a million different types of information popping up, you basically teach your brain to not be focused. You literally teach your brain ADHD. So be careful with that. Other than that, what you want to avoid is, of course, also emails. 
social media in general anyhow. Emails because they are very nice distraction and I admit it, it's really easy that when you get tired to just, yeah, do something else, to just check emails, but that is actually what you should not do. Again, because of the task switching penalty. Other than that, you want to have clear session goals. For example, say I want to write chapter two of my book, nothing else. Then you want to list out tasks that you want to complete one after another. This can actually be very beneficial for you to be procrastination. Let's say do some research, copy down the information in the Word document, uh, then sort the information and then write down the first few sentences, etc. to just list out exactly what you want to do, which is actually a little hack to get into this deep focused state, which we call flow. Other than that, of course, you want to have your materials ready. So have your bottle of water, maybe your writing materials, etc. And importantly, in your working sessions, in your deep work and flow sessions, only high priority tasks. You don't want to waste your precious time with stuff that's not relevant for you. You only want to do high priority tasks that are directly relevant to your goals. If you want to write a book, then freaking write. If you have a business presentation that is extremely important for your job, for your profession, make the freaking business presentation. As simple as it is. Then of course, unitasking is very important. So forget about multitasking, again, task switching penalty. Uh, and of course, always uh, do tasks one after another. That is another uh, component, you could say, of unitasking. Finish one thing, do the next thing. And lastly, no distractions. So again, no emails, no phone, and ideally hang up the fuck off sign if needed so that you are by yourself. And it's another advantage of working in the morning because then you are usually undisturbed and the risk that you're interrupted by someone else is very low. After doing this, then you can check your emails and ideally you can batch check it. So batch check your emails, you can batch check all of your mes messages, uh, etc. Because at, this at that point, you have ideally completed the most important things of your day within the first two to three minute, uh, hours, my apologies, meaning that you've already accomplished more than the average person ever will. All right, after that, we want to have some recovery. That is simply put to get ready for the next day uh, to reduce or increase our stress resistance and of course to feel good in general. And this could be a different protocols. You could do cold showers, which actually increase your adrenaline levels, for example, to energize you, increase your dopamine levels for motivation and drive. I actually made a separate video about cold showers, so I will link you that in the description that describes the science of it and why you should do cold showers. Other than that, other things would be yoga and stretching. Then of course you have a 20 to 30 minute walk in nature, which is a great opportunity to get some sunlight into your eyes, which uh, also helps you to, again, sleep better later at night and some more energy, to get your adrenaline levels up. That exercise, of course, it would be a good way to do it. Ideally not too intense because intense exercise can actually cause some brain fog. So be careful there. Then we have meditation, of course, a fantastic habit to get your mind clear and sorted for the rest of the day. We have gratitude, also a great one. Then we have breath work, different types of it. And lastly, we have food and hydration, of course, except if you face like myself, which is another good way to get your energy levels up, by the way. So let's call this our power hour. Other than that, after that, we have, of course, our second deep work session, flow session. Now, ideally, this is in the office for most people. It could be in the lab for me as a scientist. And then you want to spend another 90 to 180 minutes working on your most important task. So the same rules I gave you earlier apply. And again, if you hit an energy wall, don't give in. Don't check your emails. Don't check your phone. Instead, just stare at the wall for 5 to 10 minutes or do another mini break of 5 to 10 minutes once again to just lower your cognitive load, get your prefrontal cortex sorted again, have it recovered, and then keep going. All right. Next would then be the afternoon recovery, because at this point we have worked three to six hours already. We have crushed the most important tasks of the day. 
So we have done much more than the average person, and ideally we have done it in flow. As a little side note, flow increases productivity by 500%, meaning that if you have flow, you accomplish five times as much. And if you focus on the most important high priority tasks, which most people never do, by the way, most people just check the emails, etc. If you combine both of that, you can literally get as much done as the average person gets done in a month. It is possible in fact. Anyhow, afternoon recovery would be similar to what I showed you before, which would be yoga and stretching. It would be 20 to 30 minutes walking in nature. Uh, I like to have an afternoon walk, for example. Then of course, exercise would be another opportunity to do it now. Uh, you can have a nap, etc. And all of that will get you ready for the next round, round number two. Now we have work session number three. Now this is my this might actually be overkill, but I once more this would be another opportunity for you to work on the highest priority tasks of the day, maybe another 90 to 180 minutes. If you pull this up, uh, pull this off basically, then you are literally classified as a high performer by far. Other than that, this would also be a good opportunity to uh, battery in response to emails. So you can then do the smaller work that's less important. You can have meetings and you can generally do things that are not as demanding anymore, that don't require as much thinking, which is also because at the second half of the day, the majority of people, 80%-ish, tend to be uh, less alert, less focused, except for night adults like myself, which tend to be more focused at the end of the day. Now, at the end of the day, of course, after you've done your most important work, you've sorted out the emails, you've batched work, uh, removed all of the unnecessary or little or less important things, you want to cut it. You want to have clear cut. And that's why you want to have a workday closure ritual. Now, at this point, you want to just wrap up any unfinished work. Uh, and of course, very, very important here, pre-plan the next day because effectiveness means that you are strategic. And being strategic means that ideally, at this point, you review your weekly goals that you have hopefully set. So you hopefully set top three goals for the week. Then, of course, in relation to these, you want to set top three goals for the next day. So what are three things that you want to accomplish tomorrow? What are the three most impactful, most important things that get you closer to your goals? For me, this since I'm finishing up my PhD, uh, it would, for example, be to knock out some key lab experiments. So I write that down as a goal. I actually run a high performance course right now. I need to make a presentation for it. So that's what, that will be a big goal. Just continue working on this presentation, etc. So just put high, very important goals there. Then, of course, you want to take what you have and schedule it. If it's on a calendar, it won't be done. So you have to schedule it. So get your freaking calendar. It could be on paper. It could be online. You could use Outlook calendar, for example. So I'll show you that in a moment. And then just plug it in. From 10 to 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., you work on this and nothing else, etc. And lastly, you want to do any necessary preparations so that you can just Get into work the next day and get started immediately. And lastly, of course, you want to have some sort of winding down ritual in the evening. And this is also because you want to completely unplug. No work, no emails, etc. And you need to be harsh because the point is that at the end of the day, you want to reduce your stress levels as much as possible. You want to be relaxed so that you sleep well. Because when Chronic stress actually begins the moment you are so stressed that you cannot sleep properly anymore. For clarification purposes, you want to use stress to your advantage during the day to get your work done. But at the end of the day, you need to learn to switch your stress reaction off so that recovery can take place. And this is why it's so important to just cut off work entirely in the last three to four minutes, uh, hours before bed. And that's also the time to spend time with family and friends. That's where you can catch up on social media if you really want to. Then, of course, you can have further recovery methods or protocols. You can have a warm shower, which can actually prepare you wonderfully for bed. You can have a sauna, massage, maybe some yoga again, meditation, things that calm you down. 
both food and hydration, obviously. And lastly, what you definitely want to avoid is screen light. So no blue light one hour before bed. So ideally avoid your phone, avoid Netflix, etc. That is important because it blocks melatonin production, meaning that it can really mess up your sleep quality. And if you sleep poorly, then the next day will be horrible, obviously. Not to mention that if you watch screen light between 10 p.m. and 4 a.m. in the morning, it disrupts your dopamine system. Your dopamine system is, of course, responsible for motivation, for drive. And if you watch this, if you watch screen light in these hours, 10 p.m. to 4 a.m., so late at night, you will feel it the next day. You will wake up and you feel absolutely horrible. You feel fractured, mentally fractured, literally. I have this several times and it's really not pleasant. It's not fun. So you pretty much can mess up your entire next day. So avoid that. So as promised in the beginning, here is my schedule. So this would be the schedule for the 22nd Tuesday, just to give you a random example day that I pre-planned for next week. Now, what I generally do first is of course have my personal power hour. So once again, you can drag and drop. So switch the elements around. I gave you a sample order, which is very productive, obviously, but then again, it also depends on your chronotype when your energy level is good and what your personal preferences are. And in this case, I actually switched it up a little bit. So I decided to have my power hour first, although I generally have it first, in fact. So my power hour in this case would include coffee, of course. That is always part of my morning. I just like to have a warm drink. Then my cold shower, that's an absolute must for me. Always, it was a game changer for me in terms of energy levels. And of course, also my mantra in the morning. So I like to uh, affirm my personal identity, who I am, what I do, and why I do it. So this is another thing you can do, and that is especially useful in the morning to simply set up your mind for the day. Then the next thing is in this fact, actually a catch up meeting with my supervisor. So we will basically discuss my lab experiments, uh, how it all looks like, but I'm on track for my PhD. I mean, I'm almost done. So I am on track. In fact, other than that, after that, I will have my first flow session, deep work session that is. Uh, and in this particular case, since I'm currently running a high performance course, this would mean for me that I have to create the presentation for that so that I can deliver it, obviously. So I planned in actually four hours, 4.5 hours. Now, don't worry about it. I typically recommend that you do blocks of 90 to 120 minutes, although I am very used to it. So I simply like to work, to keep working, that is. And another thing I should mention is that I'm still face it at this point. So I don't eat breakfast. I don't eat lunch. In fact, I skip those. One of the reasons being that facing is actually one of the most healthiest things you can do, basically. Also because of the release of the neuroprotective hormone ghrelin. So the hunger hormone ghrelin is actually extremely beneficial for your brain, for brain health, protects you from Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. Uh, then of course you have an increase in adrenaline levels while you're faced. So you have increased alertness and focus. And it might be that you get a little bit hungry the first time you try it, but it's definitely worth it. After that, I typically spend a little bit of my time on LinkedIn. So I simply post, uh, again, share my message as a high performance coach. Other than that, after that, I have my afternoon walk. So that helps me to calm down, to relax, and also to get creativity going. Uh, once again, those lowly cognitively stimulating tasks like afternoon walks, they actually help you to come up with ideas. Now I actually made a separate video about neuroscience of creativity. So if you're interested in that, I will link it for you guys in the comments. Other than that, after that is when I actually have my first meal of the day, which is dinner in this case. So we'll cook whatever I feel like, because cooking is also one of my hobbies. Uh, and also don't be afraid to leave some blank space in between because most of the time, uh, in my case, for example, I don't have anything going on in particular, but you want to have blank space for commuting, for example, and for other things that are unpredictable. So don't try to squeeze in every little hour. Don't try to use every little minute of the day. Instead, give yourself time, give yourself some buffer. After that, after dinner, after I'm well fueled. I usually have a second flow session in the afternoon, uh, in the evening. 
and what this session actually entails uh, are different things. So in this case, it would, in my case, be to analyze experimental data because I have a bunch of data that, again, I need to analyze for my PhD thesis to write it up. And then it's also when I actually check my emails for the first time of the day. So I bet check my emails and I also do a social media check to respond to messages, et cetera. So once again, that is the time when you can do tasks that have to be done, but that are not really cognitively stimulating. They don't need much thought power, etc. All right. So after my most important work is done, after my second flow session, I usually go to the gym. Now, I personally like to do it in the evening. I actually switched from the morning to the evening, also to keep it more consistent throughout the days, because sometimes, of course, I have meetings in the morning, etc. What you've also noticed probably is that I get up quite late. I actually get up at eight in the morning. And again, this is just for me schedule wise, because I've noticed that I tend to be very tired in the morning uh, hours. So I used to get up at 4 a.m. in the morning, but I have several energy dips at that time. So that's why I simply shifted my entire day backwards uh, again, so that I can simply skip those bad times of my day and simply cover them with sleep. Anyhow, that's said, I now train in the evening and it's also to show you how to schedule that. So again, you can use any Outlook, uh, I use Outlook calendar, of course, but you can use any online calendar that you want, or you can of course use a written planner. Now, just to show you in this case, you can just mark it easily. So it would be that time we can call it the gym. Uh, if you want, you can add a little description here. So some information, uh, if you wanted to do something else, in particular, if you have leg day, put it in there, whatever you want and save it. And that's all you need to do. And there we go. We have created the event, the gym, uh, which I will hit accordingly. Tuesdays are always gym days for me. And after that, I usually have my power down ritual. So what I showed you earlier. So for me, the power down ritual includes that I have my evening self-improvement journaling. So I think about what things went well, what things didn't go so well, what was challenging, what I can do better the next day. Uh, other than that, very importantly, of course, plan my entire next day. I set goals, I schedule high priority tasks. So I pretty much make up the plan as you can see here. So I schedule my day. And of course, there's a time for me to do my gratitude practice. Gratitude is one of the few things that can permanently increase a base level of happiness. I'll link you another video in the description once more. And all of that pretty much sets me up for the evening. That is my clear cutoff. And that concludes the video. So as always, thank you for your time and attention. Now you know how to schedule your ideal day for productivity. So please make use of the tips given in this video to create and run your perfect day every day. And lastly, if you're very ambitious and you want to reach the next level of performance so that you accomplish your goals or even go beyond what you thought is possible, just shoot me an email at nicholasopeterreich at gmail.com for neuroscience backed high performance and flow coaching. More information in the video description. That said, have a flowy and very productive week, high performers, and I will see you in the next video.